This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guest is Mr. Donald Felipe. We will be talking about the Department of Land and Natural Resources Division of Boating and Recreation and existing proposed uh, rules and state boat harbors. So, uh, there's a number of things going on here, and, and thank you for joining us here. The recent proposal, as you heard me say, supposedly is boat rules, but it includes a, a couple of items there that are, is allowing, if the governor signs it, it will be allowing the Department of Boating and Recreation or, or its agents or its representatives to kill or to eradicate or to destroy any cat that by their choosing. And so what I have today is Mr. Don Felipe to come in and talk to me about this and share with us some uh, interesting developments. How did we get to this point? And Mr. Felipe was, uh, as he described it, was actually in this process being harassed and so much said for that. But Don, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. And, and on air, I'd like to apologize for the people of the state of Hawaii. Nobody should be receiving such treatments at the hand of the government. And it clearly there was some retaliation. And we're going to show a letter on screen that uh, was sent to you by then. Now, I'll let you explain what went on with that and how did you get this letter? Why did you get it? And share with the, the viewers what is it that uh, they did to harass you, as you described? Well, it all started when they had to move their office from downtown to the harbor. And uh, Mr. Ed Underwood moved his off into his office, and the cat happened to climb on his car. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got irate about it, and he hunted me down and told me to stop feeding the animals. But I had a pact with the Humane Society where we trapped and neutered these cats, and we was maintaining them for years until this moment. Now, I have uh, on screen, there's a, this letter that you received February 12th of 2016. Can you explain some of the details of, small, of that letter? Well, uh, Mr. Edward Underwood told me to stop feeding the cats, and I uh, couldn't do that, so I just kept feeding them. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, he pulled my contract uh, that I had for my boat mm -hmm. and uh, gave me a temporary for 90 days and told me that I'd had to leave the harbor. And there's no other harbors you can go to. And so I just stayed where I was at and kept doing what I was doing. And when that 90 days terminated, he renewed it mm -hmm. and gave me instructions not to feed anymore. And he was trying to charge me with uh, littering and unhealthy habits of uh, cats and stuff and tried to blame that on me and uh, try to shut me down. Mm -hmm. And uh, that wasn't working, so he went and tried to get the rules changed where he had more authority where he could destroy the cats himself. So now this supposedly proposed new change in rules really have the birthplace with an incident involving you. Yes. And, and so we can synopsize this, uh, get the better details of it, is that you, are, you live aboard this vessel. Yes. You've lived aboard your boat for some, what, 28, 28 years. years. 28 years, been in the same spot. And you have to annually, like all other boaters, make sure that your motor runs so you can take it out to a buoy about a mile out and, let's say, mm -hmm. return and show that it's... it's uh, useful, usable. Yes. And and so instead of renewing your permit f annually, you're saying that Mr. Underwood decided to uh, harass you, as you described, to make it every 90 days? Yes. I, and then in turn make you take your boat out, whereas the average person has to take it out once a year. You had to take your boat out 
every 90 days take it out to the buoy and back. Yeah, some of the some of the 90 days I didn't have to take my boat out. They just did an inspection. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had a contract for one year mm -hmm. in February, and in May is when this all started. He pulled my contract and gave me 90 days. And there are other people feeding this uh, this area as well, yeah. correct? Yes. And even some of the state workers, as you, you shared with us. It was the state workers that was feeding the cats by the office. Mm -hmm. I always fed them behind the fences. Mm -hmm. I never fed them by the office. But the state workers got to where they would put out a can of food for them, and the cats started hanging around the office. That's not my fault, mm -hmm. and they're not my cats. <laughs> And, and none of these are your cats anyway. These are no, abandoned I cats, just, correct? I was just taking care of them. Of abandoned cats that people abandoned cats. dump and leave, and, and they may breed there because they're not neutered or spayed. That's and, right. And so you're doing a good deed, so to speak, and then you're being hammered on the back end yes. because of that. We had deed. a program to where we trapped and neutered them and returned them. And this is a trap, neuter, return. Yes, with the Humane Society. Which was sanctioned by the Humane Society of, the, of Honolulu, Hawaii, Correct. right? Yes. And also the revised statute of uh, the city and county of Honolulu recognizes that program, too. And then it allows you, if an animal is tagged or microchipped, you become the owner. And that process was openly done. Yes. Many people actually participate. Yes. But you were the recipient of what you describe as harassment. While that all along you were being harassed, and, uh, as you say, because you were making litter, small kind litter and, and the food waste. But there are some pictures here that during that same time, uh, I actually filed a complaint against the Boating and Recreation Office for that same harbor area yes. where there's hundreds of tons of waste and oil and diesel and gasoline and chemicals and you name the list just laying around and, and these pictures will show that. But uh, we filed a complaint. The state health department gave a courtesy, didn't find the, the um, Boating Recreation or Mr. Underwood. But they did just give them a letter. But on the other hand, you were being tasked with re-registering your boat, getting it inspected. And you were 81, 80? 81 years old. Okay, I finally got out of you. You're not 19 still. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm way past that. <laughs> but uh, how does that leave you? I mean, uh, for a, two years now, this has been a yes. going on. So. In a mental state, how does that make you feel? And are you you you've complained to government agencies? You've it's complained. been a hardship for me, a big hardship. And you're on your own. You just left I'm out there. I'm on my own. I I pay for everything. Uh, it's all out of my pocket. And mm -hmm. uh, Ed Underwood also uh, come out there with the TV crew one time, and he's put out food on these concrete blocks for the filming mm -hmm. and claiming that it was mine, mm -hmm. that I left it there. But uh, he's done everything he could to harass me. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, think, thinking people would come up and say, hey, no, you can't do this, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have the right to, to eradicate these animals. And then they're talking about possibly shooting them. Well, the way any the wording, means any means that necessary. they desire or they find necessary. That's what he allows. wants. He wants full control. And, and what do you say to that? What do you say to the viewers out there? Do you have a plea for them to ask the governor to not sign this bill? Or well, what would you say? I remember last time uh, they put out poison to kill the ducks. We used to have ducks in the harbor. What do you mean kill the, they, they mean the Dobar and, and Department of Boating and Recreation? DLNR, yes. Uh, DLNR, put out. Steve Thompson was the man's name. He had Ed Edward's job at that time, and he took it that he didn't like the ducks, and everybody loved the ducks. And these are just uh, wild, uh, mallet, wild ducks. Mallet yeah. ducks are yes. the assortment of ducks. Yes, and, and so you're saying they wanted to get rid of them, so instead of trapping them humanely and removing them, you're saying that they took poison and just spread it out and let the poison ducks eat the poison? Poison and antifreeze they put out And antifreeze. Yeah, and I uh, 
I seen the discomfort of the animals. Some of them were still alive, dying. Mm -hmm. Took mm -hmm. two or three days for some of them to die. And I went and went to fish and game and all them, and they was not interested in it. So I went to Channel 9 News, and Channel 9 News come out and filmed it all and confronted Steve Thompson with it, and uh, he reversed himself and went in the office and wouldn't answer questions. And uh, nobody was cited for doing this dirty deed. Mm -hmm. He got he got off scot-free. So th that makes you a little nervous, I guess, because here they're saying now any they were able to kill cats any way, way they, they choose. choose. Well, I, I'm, we're at living, but it's uh, still the same. Any way desired any, yes. uh, to destroy or kill them. And that's too much power for these people with their mindset. Because you already have the experience, basically, I know. Uh, and know what they will do, spreading, liberally spreading poison out over the ground and in the properties and allowing the ducks to eat them and suffering and dying. That's exactly what they did. And uh, you say it was Steve Thompson at the time? Steve Thompson, yeah. And now, how do we know that this was a poison? You mentioned earlier about there was a poison was imported from Mexico or originated in Mexico. The health department sent me a letter because they knew I fed cats. And mm -hmm. they sent me a letter to, warning me that, that Steve was wanting to put out poison. And he was doing it under the guise of killing the rats. But the, <clears throat> when you put the poison out openly, it's not only rats get it. Everything gets it. And there's a lot of people with animals, and they let them run around in the grass and stuff, and they mm -hmm. can be subject to being poisoned. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody was interested in it but uh, Channel 9 News. They run it for two or three days on TV. Nothing ever come of it. Nobody complained or said anything about the deal. Well, they didn't really get the other than that news flash. Uh, the agency really didn't care. Didn't it the was agency. probably they wanted to do that. Yes, the so, agency was completely blind to it. Now, there are generally people that live aboard boats, and this is in the harbor, the Kehi Lagoon or Kehi Boat Harbor, stayed owned and operated. There are many people that live there, right? And, yes. and they have cats and dogs. And dogs, many and, and dogs. And so how was it that they could walk their dogs and people would, or, and they have cats. They would bring the cats in and let them run around. And so what would happen when the cats defecated or the dogs defecated, went to the bathroom or relieved themselves? Well, why, why didn't he punish them? I have no idea. He wasn't interested in them. He was only interested in me because he told me not to feed him, mm -hmm. and I didn't stop. And there was no law against feeding. There's no law. He tried to use a, a littering law on it, but uh, putting out food is not litter. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, wants to change the law now to where he has the, the police department would enforce it for him. And it's in process right now of being signed and put in effect. And he thinks it's guaranteed. He's, he acts as though it's already a foregone conclusion yes. that yes. that this uh, law will be changed or the rules will be changed, allowing him to kill or hire someone to kill or, or hire an exterminator or put a bounty on the, the cat's head. And uh, this is the kinds of things that we hear now being said overtly by various people. But I think he's already depending on this because he's given me back my contract to the February 28th, what it was originally at. Mm -hmm. And I think he thinks the HPD, Hawaiian Police Department, will do the enforcement for him if I don't stop feeding the cats. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break uh, in about 10 seconds or so, but uh, hold that thought. We'll be back and we'll talk more. Uh, we will take a break. This is Eyes on Hawaii and Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. We will be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. My friend, mother, what big eyes you have. 
wolf, she said. All the better to see you with, my dear. That's the wolf. What are you doing? Okay, poor... Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Push! Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guest is Mr. Donald Filippi. We will be talking about the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Boating and Recreations, existing and proposed rules in the state, it changes in the state of harbors here in Honolulu. So, thank you again, thank Donald. Thank you, Carol. So, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and cry. I want to be a big boy, but the hearing when government behavior such as this, if there's a law, then enforce the law. If there's not a law, don't go behind the scenes and become creative and invent means of and use not law, but your administrative powers to harass someone like yourself or harass other people in the public, the general public. It's just not good government. It's, it's bad. And so if you would, uh, I want people to understand that you're not just throwing feed out there. There was an active program where you were actually trapping the cats, that you didn't place there, the animals, trapping them and being assisted by people that were experts at trapping. And they were doing it for free, and they would spay and neuter the animal and return it back to yes. the area. What, you had an experience with Mr. Underwood and as well as the trappers. Can you explain what went on? Yes. Uh, I had this Cats Friends, that's an organization for cats, and Jennifer has uh, been doing my trapping for 20 years mm -hmm. in that same place. And uh, Ed Underwood started trapping the cats himself and took them to the pound and when the pound checked them and they had registrations, they would call Jennifer, and Jennifer would go get the cats and bring them back to the harbor. That's a, our legal procedure. But Ed found out that she was bringing the cats back. He refused her to do any trapping or come into the harbor anymore. And during that conversation, uh, he said, if I file a lawsuit, you, if, if Donald I file a lawsuit, that he can stall it for years. So there's no going to be no lawsuit. And so, therefore, she does not go back to the harbor to trap and she spade. She hasn't been back since. Yeah. And so that means the population increase. It has increased maybe 30 percent since so he started this. This this suggests that there was something sinister on the part of the state. And the, and the way they were handling this, deny you, threaten you, and then harass you with the procedure of registering your boat and hold you at bay, basically, punishment, you know, yes. punishment, harassment, and then in turn denying others who would was assisting you and trapping yes. them to spay and neuter, let the population increase, and then go and take the cameras and then write a law and ask for requests to modify that law to amend it to allow them to kill these very cats because he has created to yes. some degree this problem yes he exacerbated by sitting there denying you the right to feed denying them the right to to uh, trap and neuter but no one spoke to the actual behavior of the cats which they continue to breed nobody cares about the cats in the administration they mm -hmm. think they should just be eliminated Mm -hmm. They don't know how beautiful these animals are. I, yeah. I have some beautiful Persians and 
has Siamese cats. They're just beautiful cats, and they mm. want to just destroy them. They, they have no and, feelings for them at all. And what do you say to the people that are actually dumping them there, driving by and, and releasing little You know, I've and, never seen anybody dumping them, but I've had carriers. They bring their pet carriers down there and just open the door. Well, that, that would constitute dumping. <laughs> I've got several carriers on my But we know you, you got cats, that. right? Not yes. to be facetious, but you have cats. Yes. And they're not hiking the highway. We don't see them strolling down the highway going and asking for directions to <laughs> K.E. Lagoon. So somebody is actually driving them there and yes. dumping them off. Well, they change. Some of them go to the mainland. They have a pet. They just dump it. Mm-hmm. Some of them have to move into another apartment where they can't take their animal, and they just dump it. Mm -hmm. They don't think they're doing anything wrong. Most of the people have the mindset that these animals can survive on their own. Right. But there's so many in the Sand Island. Now, I, here's an interesting thing that I found. And this is a little uh, tidbit, and I'm still following the bigger story, is that some of the exterminators are hired to trap cats in certain areas, and the way the rules are set up, there's no real way of tracking what they trap. And then I'm informed uh, by a source that say, a report, that some of the trappers, the hired tra trappers, will take them and release them in another area because that makes good for business. That's right. You're right. Now, I've not witnessed that, but I do know there are terminators and, and uh, exterminators Pri at schools private, and state private, property and private, private property. people like Matson and them, they hire their own eliminators and they get rid of their cats. Mm -hmm. Where they dump them or do with them, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that I know of. Because you, if you are an exterminator, you have to trap them. And that's cost time, and then you got to euthanize them because yeah. you're not in the program of trapping and, and returning them. So uh, are uh, many of those cats. Another source uh, of human behavior that is responsible for this is that you and I are neighbors, say, let's say, and we have a spat. We don't, I don't want your cat in my garden. Yes. And I've told you about five or six times, and, yes. and so now that's it. I go down and go to the Humane Society or go buy me a trap, trap the animal, pick it up, haul it to Sand Island or Cahey Lagoon, dump it. You are missing your pet now, and uh, I am now don't have a cat walking through my gardens anymore. That's a pretty natural thing that mm -hmm. happens all the time. And, yes. and this behavior. So this law, it seems, not, it misses the point. It does not speak to all of those issues, and the penalties should be severe. Uh, how about where they going to evict you? If they had to shut you out in your boat, that meant you were homeless. Yes. You would be an 81-year-old man, or at that time you were 80, you'd be an 80-year-old man adding to the population of homeless people. That's for sure. All because you were feeding Fluffy. And I'd have to do something with my boat because there's no place to put it here. Right. So the, the damage, and without even breaking the law, this is how they can inflict injury on you. And this is why I suggest that the governor do not sign this bill because he is basically giving Ed Underwood a nuclear weapon, so to speak, to use against the people and to use against the cats and anything else that walks on four legs. That's the way I see it. And God forbid if the ducks fly in there now, we, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any ducks anymore. Yeah. Not one. But, you know, giving a backdrop of this, if the pictures that we show, the, the trash, the hundreds of tons of trash and having to clean it up after I've um, filed a complaint. They take derelict boats and they bring them in and they smash them right there in the harbor. Right. So there's asbestos, there's potential for, uh, fi well, not potential, fiberglass. The kill of a sailboat is tons of uh, lead, and they break that up, and so you understand. So the picture that we see right now is just stockpile trash that we're looking at on the screen, and yet you were being tagged for and threatened with the loss of your boat, which is your home, and your imprisonment and all of that if you didn't stop feeding 
And just look at the conditions here. You know, if you take a look at that picture there, uh, that big tank in the backdrop leaked some 48,000 gallons of jet fuel. Yes, it did. And it was smelly and leaking and leaching into the state property. It's all state property. But Ed Underwood didn't file a citation with those people. It no. contaminated the water. And I'm not making excuses, but we're drawing parallels here to say, why are we so harsh? Are we being the state against you? In ven vendetta. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they can. Yes. And they don't have to answer to anyone. And he's a powerful man. Well, he wants me to know that. Yeah, he, exactly. He's sending you that message, but he has a boss, and that boss is uh, Governor David Ige, and we appeal to David Ige today. And Susan Case is the right. boss. Well, Susan, Suzanne Case is the chairperson, and she's giving the nod, actually. Uh, she agrees with that. But Ige is, sits now waiting to sign in the ink to dry if he hadn't already signed it, or we don't want him to sign it, so... Should approach it a little different. I hope somebody approaches it different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you are now you're you're still feeding, but not on the property as much. I feed exactly where I've been feeding till I'm stopped. Okay. And then how the, the how are they going to stop it? Real quick, we got about one minute. Well, he said he's going to fine me a thousand dollars and and put me in jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, and do away with the cats himself. Well, we'll see about that, and, and we'll, I'm sure the eyes are out there watching, and, and I see there's complaints filed, and people are now actually moving to file legal actions against us, whatever the outcome of do, um, Governor Ige's uh, actions. Anything real quick? you got 25 seconds. I don't know where they, I can make a complaint, and I went to several state agencies. They don't want to hear anything about it. Okay. I don't know what you can do. Well, thank you, Don, for joining me, and I appreciate it. I'm sure others will thank you, too, for coming out and revealing this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining me today on Eyes on Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii. If you are interested in getting on our mailing list, go to thinktechhawaii.com. Thank you for joining me today on Eyes on Hawaii, on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Jay Fidel, our executive director, our technical support team, Robert McLean, Ray Sengalon and Nick Sexton. I'll see you again in two weeks. I'm Carol Cox. Aloha.